A lot of you have been asking in the comments to see a few more other themes than Lego Star Wars, which is really fun for me because I own a ton of Lego. We got Minecraft and Harry Potter just off the screen to the left. We've got Marvel, we've got a bit of DC, we've got a load of other themes, Sonic, some CMFs like Looney Tunes. So expect a lot more than Star Wars in the near future. Today specifically, we're going to be looking at all my Marvel, DC and Sonic characters because they are on the same display but it's mostly going to be Marvel. I think there's a row of DC and like three Sonic characters in my collection so far, but this is on a brand new 3D printed display. I teased it in a short when we were looking at the last Lego Marvel, I think it was the Spider-Man magazine, and I'm so excited to show these to you because they can hold so many more figs and I'd actually overstocked my old Marvel display. So I'm gonna speak a little bit about the upgrade of the display and then we're gonna get straight into the minifigures I own. I do apologize for the lighting of this room. Last night there must have been some sort of power cut because the Wi-Fi bulb that is usually so easy to use is no longer responding. So I've had to open the window and let in all the nasty UV rays. Don't worry, all the Lego is out of sight. But hopefully it'll be fixed by tomorrow. Let's get straight to looking at those minifigures. The only reason I'm recording this is so I can go viral if something bad happens. You can see what I mean when I say I have a mix of Marvel at the bottom. Spider-Man is still licensed under the Marvel theme. It's only the movies that are Sony. Sony don't own the rights to the action figures, so that's why I'm including them in Marvel. But we've got our Spider-Man row at the bottom. I'd really like to pick up a regular Doc Ock, but I'm happy with the other characters I've got. There's a few like the comic version of Electro that I'd really like to have in my collection and the Black Cat and a few like Daredevil from the Bugle. And then we've got our X-Men row, which I'll give you a closer look. There are a few customs from an old video where I made a few X-Men customs. You can see Gambit, Morph, Cyclops. Rogue is missing her face because I've used it on, I think I've used it for a custom Padme, and you'll notice that a few of these parts have been swapped out, especially the Jane Foster or the Thor, the Mighty Thor, I think her name is. I have nicked that headpiece for a custom Padme because, well, it's the same actress. So that one does make sense. We start off in the other Marvel characters with the Avengers, these six of them, and Black Panther, who is a really cool minifigure. And then, you know, all the other characters, I'm sure. I won't have to go through them one by one. We've got a whole row dedicated to sort of guardians and friends. We do see Thor Valkyrie, who has the same hairpiece as Reva, I think it was, which isn't a very common piece, Korg. And we've even got Meek just down here in the corner. So that is the entirety of my Marvel minifigure collection, which isn't as big as I would like it. The only set I'm actually actively looking at picking up is the new Thor and Surtur, because I have something planned for the minifigures. The skeletons look awesome, and Thor comes with a new rubber cape, which I have to add to my collection. Speaking of, I cannot forget about Doctor Strange here, who I've put a little mock together of that poly bag for who does have one of the first, I do believe, rubber capes in Lego. We've also got Batman here from DC, who we'll take a look at in a second. And I'm currently working on building a throne for the Nightmare King, but these don't fit on that display. Originally, I was gonna theme each of the bases, but then when I realized I could fit so many minifigures side on, almost like some sort of school photo of the Marvel DC cast here, which does look really cool next to my other one, on display. I have two of these and we'll take a look at the display in just a second, but I think it's really cool with these poly bags displayed out front. DC is a lot simpler because I don't have as many characters. I have a few of the ones that I wanted, like the Man of Steel, we've got Wonder Woman, we've got a few different Batmen, and we also have Batwoman, I believe, who I'm looking at 3D printing a helmet for, just so it matches up with the other Batman and also it would allow me to change the orientation of the headpiece because a few of the minifigures like Harley, like Batwoman and like Lois Lane, I think her name is, that feels too marvelly of the double L to be a DC character but I'm pretty sure that's what it is, even Wonder Woman can't turn her head. We've got Robin, a few different Jokers, we've also got Harley Quinn, Penguin and then my favourite DC character the Cyberman. I'm just kidding, it's from Doctor Who. I would like to make a few more custom Doctor Who minifigures. Maybe I will 
when the next season starts because that's got to be soon and then on the top we've got i can't remember his name it's an old lego minifigure you can see it's a little different to the rest and that is a pattern pending lego brick from like the 1950s or something crazy like that a few different sonic characters i realize the crab is backwards and i also have the monkey with a coconut i forget the name of all the different badniks but as i've said this is a completely 3d printed display you can see the hexagons on the side and each of the base plates that the minifigures are standing on are a bit thinner than a lego version but they actually go the whole way across and measure seven lego minifigure cmf display plates so that is seven lots of four studs which you can see houses a ton of minifigures that's about 28 studs wide a little more with the bit sticking out to hold them but we can fit one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve this was the wrong row to pick because we don't have a full set of minifigures but we'll say about 14 minifigures on each row if you were trying to have them coming inwards you might be able to squeeze a 15 but i think 14 is a comfortable enough number and for anyone wondering what the back looks like we only have one support in the middle the original file this isn't my design had two supports but you can get away with just the one in the middle i would recommend gluing it down i haven't but it does tend to be a little wobbly if you don't glue it in place so i know what a few of you are probably thinking because if you do remember there used to be my diorama my hallway diorama scenes that i'd stack on top here and there were a total of six of them which i used to stand on these green again 3d printed displays most of my displays end up being 3d printed to some extent or at least modified with the help of my 3d printer and i'm actually gonna keep two of these to try and sit the minifigures on top you know what as the cameras are rolling i'm gonna go with the bold choice of just well that was a mistake the thing hasn't fallen apart technically but i have dropped the middle bit out i want to see if i can balance them on the top of these green units just to give it some height so not only i can see it from below but also these little builds i have in front aren't covering any of the minifigures i'm thinking the next time that i pull this down i'll definitely have to glue all these parts in place this would have been really helpful if we had the big lights so that you could actually see what i am trying to do here but hopefully we can latch the left hand side on the green bit without tipping the right because if this falls that's a load of minifigures that are going to go absolutely everywhere i'm not sure quite how much of that footage from the last say half an hour is usable so i'm going to go over the plan again where these minifigures sit they're a bit back in the shelf specifically this far deep and i have a few of these green displays from my diorama collection that i'm not really going to be using for anything else because of the brand new displays now the big problem is this gap on the top of them but i keep a few old cardboard boxes i was going to use a lego box but i found this thicker material and if i can put that on top and create some sort of base plate probably wrap a little bit of tape around it just to make sure it is secure i can bridge that gap and then that will be wide enough to display eight brick heads on it i will have to elevate the back ones i'll look at a probably 3d printing a long-term solution for that just a little shelf that i can attach to this in fact i could 3d print the entire thing and get it to clip on but for now i'm gonna stick this to this display here and make a temporary one i can go back revisit this when i've got a little bit of spare time but there's a few other projects so i've whipped up this little diy stand and hopefully this holds up we've got the first prototype of this shelf in fact we've got the first and second prototype the tape is slightly coming undone especially on the one back here so there's definitely the worry of how long these are going to last but i think they're good for now whilst i work on a more permanent solution now we've just got to see if they can hold all eight brick heads i'm so happy lego bricks are actually quite light because there is nothing else supporting this display other than the cardboard just floating on the side of the legs but now let's get this into position it's crazy to think that this video started off just being a marvel minifigure showcase and now i am once again completely rearranging my displays this is definitely not a strong solution and i don't recommend 
doing this with your Lego brick heads at home either. But as long as it's up against the wall, which it is, I don't see it being much of a problem and also gives me a whole display over to the left for other things such as poly bags and the like. Now we can set up our minifigure stand resting on the shelf, which is probably how it should always remain. And very, very, very carefully try and put the display over the top. That was easier than I expected it to be. I do need to flip this crab around so that it does actually fit with a display behind, but I'm actually really liking the way this looks. As soon as we can get some risers for the brick heads behind, I'm very happy I decided to spontaneously switch up my displays for this video. And I hope you did enjoy the journey. I now have to do the same with the other, but I can do that off camera. I think this looks really, really cool and definitely rivals my Star Wars one just behind me. Though Star Wars figures are always gonna look better than Marvel. Let me know your favorite theme down in the comments out of Star Wars, Marvel, DC, maybe even Sonic. I'll throw that in there. I'm sure there are some people that prefer the Sonic theme. I mean, the custom head molds are really, really cool. We need a few more over in Star Wars, Marvel, maybe even DC, who knows? But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video with a spontaneous upgrade of my display. You've got a sneak peek before anyone else has of how my minifigures look with me. And I appreciate all of you watching to the end of the video. Check out the others on screen now that might interest you. And may the bricks be with you always.